What's good y'all? today's video, I'm gonna take you through a behind the scenes look of a music video I shot using Aperture's brand new Infinity Bar light. It's a really cool light and I'm gonna talk about the details and all the really cool stuff that this light can do. But first, let's hop straight into the behind the scenes look of this music video that I shot using the Infinity Bar. First things first, man, this music video is a super run and gun shoot. I've had the Infinity Bar for a little bit, but this was like the only time that I can actually go out and use it. I didn't wanna just take it out the box and tell you what I thought about it. I had to go use it on something and then I had to form my real world opinion about the light. So this is the running gun video with my homie Ace Haven, my homie A1 Haven. I really just rode around like an hour or two before we shot this video and I drove behind a convenience store, a grocery store, and I was like, yo, this looks really dope. I scouted the location when it was bright. So when I came back at nighttime, I noticed that this was like totally different. It was bright and uh, I expected it to be really dark. And I was like, damn, this kind of messes up my flow and what I wanted for the music video. But I'm like, yeah, whatever, we gonna do it. So we get to the location and um, I just immediately start to scope out different angles or like different things that would look cool around a scenario and just try to form some different uh, setups for the music video. The first setup that we ended up doing was this really cool crate over here in the corner. Next to it is like an excavator, like some sort of lift tool that they use to lift up crates, I'm assuming. And I'm like, yo, you can hop on this and you can get on top of the crate. And then I can shoot a really cool angle view from down low. It'll look dope, it'll have some power to it. And then I'll also up the shutter speed and do a lot of hand movements to make it look really intense. So this was the first setup. We ended up lighting this scene with the infinity bar as kind of like the kicker light because the light on the side of the store was already really freaking bright and it was kind of overpowering the scene, but I just still wanted to add like some stylistic look to it. I wanted the overall color of the video to be red. So we ended up putting the infinity bar on a C-stand. We raised it up really high. We kind of just aimed it off to the side. Then we put Ace in the scene and just kind of fiddle with it to figure out how it looked. The camera setup that I use for this music video is the Sony a7 IV. I'm testing that out right now. So I've kind of formed my opinion on it. I have a real world review of that camera coming really soon as well. But it's been really fun and interesting to get back on Sony and just try out what they have on the market right now because it's been a minute but yeah a7 IV the lens is the sony 35 millimeter f1.4 g master lens and i just shot this shot handheld he got up there we played the song a couple times i raised the shutter speed up to like 100 over just to give it like an intense jittery feel i didn't want it to be the 180 degree shutter rule because this is like the whole vibe of the song and a lot of the shots in this music video you'll see if you check it out have like this intense feel to it so we shot a handheld, I shot at a couple different angles. I got a wide, I got a close up. That was basically the gist of the light. The infinity bar, we set it to like a red tone. I think this was maxed out around 100. So that just tells you how bright these lights were that were outside of the back of the store. But I think we managed and I think the shots actually turned out really dope. The next setup is kind of like a fenced area. I would imagine like it used to be like garbage dumpsters behind it, but they took them out. But I noticed the scene because the fence was really dope, but like a lot of the planks on the front of the fence were kind of broken. So I'm like, dang, this looks like some really cool foreground. I think that we can set something that really dope with this. So we put Ace in the scene and I kind of framed him up right down the middle of the gate. Then we put the Sony a7 IV on sticks with the 35 millimeter, lowered the aperture down just to kind of blur out those foreground elements from the fence. And we kind of had the scene already set up from there. We had a light off to the left of this fenced area area that was already there and this was like kind of flooding the scene it was super bright and i wish it was darker but i really didn't bring a lot of modification i figured we'd just be out running a gun and just to try to do something really fast but i brought the infinity bar behind him and i boomed it up and then i shot it right like to the side of him just to give him like a little bit of edge a kicker just to kind of pop him off that dark background and if you look at the frame it's actually kind of peeking through the side of one of the planks so this was like just the way i composed it to get it as close to him as possible but be out of the scene so this was just me kind of, you know, messing around with blocking with the scene. Same red tone on that light, pretty much maxed out in the scene as well. And we shot a couple different takes of this also. We got like a wide shot, we got a close shot. And then in post, what I did was I used the end music video pack from Motion VFX and I use the dynamic movement. And I love this because it just gives static shots so much energy. You can even apply it to other shots as well, but it just kind of mimics and plays off the motion that's going on in the shot. And just, it zooms in, zooms out. You got a bunch of different parameters that you can adjust with it, like the amount of handheld shake that you want or the amount of zoom. I just love this effect. I use it for a bunch of different things, but that's how I utilize it for the music video. Now, before we get into the next setup, I just want to tell you guys a little bit about the Infinity Bar, what it's all about, 
what's this new light? Why should you care about it? This thing is interesting because it's really not anything like it on the market that I know of, especially at this price point. So the Infinity Bar comes in a bunch of different sizes. They have a one foot option, a two foot option, and also a four foot option. I have two of the two foot options. As far as what you get with the light, you get a charging cable, you get two different mounts, which I'll talk about in a second. And then that's pretty much it. And when it comes to mounting for this, they have a brand new mount that I've never seen. The mount essentially goes into the back of the pixel bar and then you twist it and it then expands to hold the light. So I've never seen a mount like this. They also have a splice connector mount, which allows you to mount the infinity bar to another infinity bar to create either a longer horizontal uh, pixel bar or to mold it into different shapes, which would be really cool for music videos. I really like the splice connector and I used it on this next setup, which I'll show you here in a second. Another really cool thing about the splice connector is that it goes into like the power outlets on the side of the infinity bars. And if you want to, you can just power the entire length of however many of these you connect with one power cable, which is really dope. It does have an internal battery, which is cool, but if you wanted to power it all with one power source, you can do that with these uh, splice connectors, which is dope. And it also has your standard 3 8 mount on the side of it. So if you wanted to just mount it to like a spigot or something like that, you can do that as well. It also has some really strong magnets on the back, which I use for a setup as well. And I'll show you that when we get into that setup. The Infinity Bar is kind of like a flat, fat tube light. I know that's a really weird description, but that's like my best way to describe it. It's like frosted over the top. So it's a uh, smooth diffused light. It has like no edges. This is going to be like the best light for practical scenes. And I can see this being like used in short films that have like uh, spaceships that need practical lights inside them that look, that look futuristic. This thing looks really freaking cool. It's like a flat fat tube light. This light has your typical CCT values, you know, going from tungsten to daylight and beyond. It also has like the effects that pretty much every other light has right now. Paparazzi effect, flicker effect, fire effect, paparazzi, that sort of stuff like that. But this can also do pixel effects as well. So it can do color chase, it can do color switcher and a bunch of different other pixel effects. And it connects directly to the Sidus Link app. So it connects with all your other aperture Amaron lights and you have a bunch of different customization inside of this app for different pixel effects that you can do so this light is pretty dope for the next setup this is where i actually utilize the light as like a primary key light source because all the other scenes were used in conjunction with those really bright lights that were already on the side of the store this scene i really like this trailer coming out of the side of the store it looked really big and i thought that like if we film an ultra wide shot of this it would look really dope so we pulled the car into the scene and then off to the side of the frame we were going to use the infinity bars to light up ace and the car so what i ended up doing was i used one of those splice connectors and i connected both of the infinity bars together just to give us an overall brighter output because you have two lights obviously it's going to be brighter than using one so we connected it using the splice connectors we connected both of those and then we put them on the junior boom arm we just raised it up really high out of the scene connected the lights to the Sidus Link app, and then I put on uh, one of the pixel effects to kind of switch from like yellow and red to just give it a cool stylized look. And that was just lighting him in the car and it looked really dope. As far as camera setup for this, we used the a7 IV. I used the 16 and the 35 F4, the power zoom version, the brand new Sony one. This lens is really light and I can't wait to test it out for vlogging. But that was the setup for the ultra wide shot. We used the R3 Pro gimbal from Ronin and we shot bunch of different takes kind of running in and out going side to side you know typical gimbal stuff and then i uh, switched out back to the 35 and then i got some close-up gimbal shots and some b-roll my setup turned out really dope i like the way it looked for the next setup i used that splice connector with the infinity bars again but this time i switched the angle so i ended up turning the infinity bars to like almost like an arrow shape and in this scene, I utilized those really strong magnets on the back of the, of the Infinity Bar. I walked up to that trailer that was in the previous scene, and I just ended up sticking these straight to the trailer. These magnets are super solid, and pretty much anything like metal, they're gonna stick to. They're not going anywhere. I stuck it straight to the side of the trailer. I put Ace in front of it and just faced him to the side, so it's like a silhouette shot. And I just had to perform a couple different times. I had the tripod on sticks, and then we used the 35 millimeter again on the A7 IV. Shot these with a really high shutter speed, intense angles, got a close up, got a wide. 
And uh, that was pretty much the gist of that shot. So those are the setups from the music video. Make sure you guys check it out. It's gonna be a link down in the description. But let me first talk about how I feel about the Infinity Bar. Who is this for? Who should be purchasing this? And what would be the best use cases for this light? Now this light is really dope because like I said, I feel like there's no other light like this on the market. You have tube lights, you have pixel effects, all that stuff's cool, but it's nothing like this light because it has no borders. It's gonna integrate really well as like practical light source in Hollywood films and short films, people who are building out sci-fi sets for like spaceships or like really cool futuristic looks. I think that this is gonna be like the perfect light for that sort of stuff. People who are shooting music videos who wanna have really cool shapes of light, people who wanna shoot performances through their glasses of the artist's glasses and have like a triangle in the glasses or like squares, this is gonna make that process so much easier because you're not gonna have to do all of the complicated rigging. It's gonna literally just require you to have one splice connector and you can take this to like a hexagon, to a square, to a triangle. Like you can just make so many different shapes with these splice connectors. And I think that apps did a really good job of thinking of the creative when they created this mount. Like, I've always wanted to do something like that, but the rigging options for tube lights to make that sort of stuff has just been so freaking extensive and complicated. And Napster did a really good job. So I think that this light is gonna be really good for those sorts of people. For me personally, I wouldn't use this to replace the tube light. Like if I'm running and gunning like I did just now, I honestly would have preferred to have like the Amberon T2C. Like that's my favorite running gun light. It's like an ice light, it has a battery handle, you can put it anywhere, it's rugged. Like that just feels like the light for me personally when I'm running and gunning. But this feels like a really nice specialty light for the people who want cool stylistic stuff. If you shoot music videos, I recommend you invest in a set of these just so you can make like really cool like shape setups for your music videos for people doing short films and stuff like that. I think it's gonna be really beneficial to have a kit of these as well because they're gonna work really good as practical lights and sets. I think another really good use case for this light is it's gonna be one of the best lights for creative spaces like this. It has no borders. It's going to look really good inside of scenes. If I just had that on the wall right there, kind of flash and they're doing a pixel effect, it would look really dope. The only light that I can kind of compare to it is like the LifeX Beam series. I used to have one of those on my wall in my creative space. But the problem with that light is that it looks really cool in the background. But once it like kind of touches your skin or casts light on your skin, it gives a really ugly purple hue to everything. So the good thing about the Infinity Bars is that the light is color added. Accurate. So if I set it to 5600 Kelvin and it casts light on my skin, it's going to look like 5600 Kelvin and not whatever that really weird tone is that the light effects light gives. So it's a really interesting light. It's a specialty light. And um, I think it's up to you to decide if you need it. Like I said, I think that uh, those use cases that I listed are really good ones for it, but it's up to you. You got to reach in your pocket and spend the money. If you want to check it out, it's going to be links down in the description though. If you guys want to check out the music video, it's going to be a link down in the description for that as well. It's a really tight music video. We shot it really quick. I think it turned out dope. The one thing that I don't like about this Infinity Bar, which I forgot to mention, is that I really wish it was brighter. Like, <laughs> that's my only thing that I don't necessarily like about it, like my only gripe with it. It's not the brightest light in the world. So like I said, if I'm running a gun and that's not the light that I'm going to go pick up. But what I will say is that it lasted for a significant amount of time. A lot of those setups was like at full 100 brightness and they also have like a smart battery option inside of the infinity bar as well so if you go in it and you know you want to run it for at least six hours you can set it to six hours and it'll give you the optimal output range for it to last for that full six hours which is really dope but enough about the infinity bar you want to check it out links down in the description like i said music video as well make sure you guys check that out drop it a like but um i'm out man i got the tubes as well so i'm gonna be doing a video about those coming up really soon, also the A74, but enough talking. I'm out. Peace. Deuces.